I'm going to give you to the count of three to get your lousy, lying, low-down, four-flushing carcass out my door. One, two... Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Welfare servants. You get them for free and either they're ridiculously broken or you trade up as soon as someone better comes along. But the cool thing about today's contestant is that she has roles to play for both new players and the old guard, though not necessarily in the way you'd expect. Let's take a closer look. Santa Nightingale is a 4-star archer and you can get NP5 for free. For people with developing accounts, that means one thing. Beat stick duty. One of the biggest problems you have in the early game is just clearing things with any kind of speed. You typically don't have the servants or CEs to run one of the loop farming systems, meaning you have to get creative. Thankfully, archers have an edge in the rat race phase of account building because they have a rush. He does a ton of damage, he has a battery, and he can blow up a lot of first or even second waves against sabers and berserkers. On top of all this, he cycles himself out on account of his NP killing him, meaning you have some team building flexibility. And to add extra reach, you have Nightingale's third skill, Bell Rung by an Angel on the Holy Night. It's a party attack and crit damage buff. After Arash does his thing, it's the Nightingale show. Now if you don't have your own Scotty or any of the other 50% chargers, you can borrow one from your friends list and run Nightingale with a 50% CEE. Her event comes with a powerful Traces of Christmas's Past, which gives both quick performance and starting charge. This combo will let her get her NP off immediately and clear a wave. This will leave a wave unaccounted for, but you can deal with that either by brawling either wave 1 or 2, depending on your disposition. Not the fastest thing in the world, but faster than throwing in attackers willy-nilly. To make things a bit easier, Nightingale has a reasonably high attack for a 4-star archer. Now some accounts can find themselves in a strange spot, where they have multiple 50% chargers, but they have trouble actually running the relevant system attacker. Either low NP levels or no case scope on someone like Atalanta or Emia. In that situation, you can actually leverage a combination of Arash and a party swap Mystic Code to help Nightingale NP twice. Arash kills the first wave, Nightingale's Craft Essence and the first support let you NP the second wave, and then once you get on the third wave, here's how it goes. Your second support is rotated in to replace Arash. They give their charge to Nightingale, and then you swap one of the expended supports out for your third support. They top Nightingale off, and then she blows up the final wave. To add a bit of spice, you work in Nightingale's second skill, which gives a multi-turn NP damage buff, among other things. Those other things are a lot more relevant to our advanced applications, so let's see how Endgame accounts use her. Endgame farming emphasizes NP cycling, where you have the same attacker clear all three waves. Either that, or you're doing a 90 plus node, and you need a highly specialized team anyway. Nightingale's not really relevant for either case. She's just not much of a looper. You need NP gain and maybe quick steroids for that, and she has neither. But don't despair. The head nurse still has a role to fill. The utility role. Lake and boss fights can throw some seriously nasty mechanics your way, and the more tools you have to cheese them, the easier your life's gonna be. Nightingale's first skill, for instance. Assault Medicine, aside from sounding like a malpractice suit waiting to happen, does three things. It removes one debuff from your front line, also heals them, and it removes one buff from every enemy. Then on her second skill, Nightingale has a targeted guts and multi-turn buff removal resistance. While some servants try to remove their own buffs, the main use of this is to counter enemies with buff removal. Either they'll remove your offensive buffs to stall you out, or they remove your protection effects before their noble phantasm. This counters both scenarios and it's a very rare effect. Nightingale is in fact the most reliable way of obtaining this effect, and it's a substantial part of what makes her valuable late game. Now using this as a counter gimmick has one big challenge. She's still structured as an attacker. If you leave her on the field unnecessarily, she'll gum up your hand with a bunch of quick cards and, on account of her Archer class star absorption, draw resources away from your main attacker. In general, she tends to just sit around once her skills are expended. So the challenge is timing Nightingale's entry and exit in a given fight. The specific circumstances are going to vary, but I've got some general pointers. If the gimmick in question happens midway through a fight, you can keep Nightingale in the backline and swap her in reactively. But if the gimmick happens right at the start, or the fight goes on for a while after you counter it, you can use a taunt CE to make sure she doesn't stick around. Goody Goody Poster Girl is the Holy Grail, but at this point in time, it's extremely rare. Odds are you'll need to leverage something like Outrage, which you can pick up from the Rare Prism Shop. But there is a catch. Outrage and a lot of other taunt CEs only work for a single turn. If Nightingale survives that turn on account of her max level stats, or because the boss pops a bunch of skills and just doesn't attack, you're in deep shit. That's why Goody Goody Poster Girl is so valuable. It's a multi-turn taunt. But don't despair. You can actually mess with the odds by making an eSports Nightingale. 
The TLDR, for those of you not familiar, is that you deliberately keep a spare copy at a lower ascension, but with irrelevant skills leveled. And obviously you don't give her foes. Because of her reduced health pool, there's a much bigger chance of her getting one shot. This will cycle her out for a fresh support. Now as to which level you run Nightingale at, I see three options. The first is to keep her at level 1 in case you just need to cleanse and buff purge effects. Pretty straightforward. And because her heal is the only part that scales on her first skill, you can keep it unleveled. The second option is to keep her at first ascension minimum level. This unlocks her purge resistance, and this one you do want leveled because the chance of it working scales. The final option is to keep her at third ascension minimum level which unlocks her attack and crit damage buffs. This makes her more impactful for your main attacker but also increases the risk of her surviving. Here's the fun part. You get 4 Ascension Lanterns, so unless my math is off, you can keep all 3 types in your inventory. Now you'd still have to level each one's skills independently, which is its own hell. Hope you like farming bullets, but the option is there. That's an easy choice for returning players to make. Keep your original Santa Nightingale at Max Ascension and B5, and the new ones can be kept separate for esports. But if you're a new player and you don't have any Nightingales, you'll have to make a hard choice. Either keep a complete Nightingale and make her worst friend game utility, or maintain a gimped copy that's far less useful in the early game. No easy answers there, but I'm very curious as to what you'd all pick in that situation. Let me know down below. Now let's talk a bit about her Noble Phantasm. It purges offensive buffs and applies a defense down, which is nice in the lower end scenario where she's your main attacker. But it also has another effect. Nightingale can actually remove debuffs from enemies, specifically the ailment debuffs, Poison, Curse, and Burn. This is supposed to be a lore-based drawback, but you can hypothetically use it to your advantage. Sometimes enemies get stronger as they accumulate debuffs, typically curse. For instance, there's an enemy about a third of the way through Lost Belt 6 that does this. I don't want to show it on account of spoilers, but you can actually use Nightingale's NP to fuck with it and remove all of its accumulated curses. Not the most practical thing in the world, but it is funny. So if you ever run into an enemy that tries to stack damage over time effects on itself, think about Nightingale and do it for the meme. Santa Nightingale's not the greatest in regular combat, but in the early game she's a functional beat stick, and later on her utility lets you counter one of the most annoying mechanics in the game, Buff Purge. For this reason, you 100% should not miss your chance to get her, and even if you already have her, it's worth keeping spare copies around for esports. Would recommend. Now if you're curious about the original Nightingale, she's a pretty strange servant in her own right, and I actually have a video on her. So give it a watch, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.